Hello everyone. Uh, through the first half of the class, uh, we talked about basically, I would say, the land side aspect of the airport. So from now on, we are going to look at more of the air side, so more of the engineering aspect of the airport. And the first subject we are going to talk about is about the airfield design. So let's move on to slide number three. Here I set the airport reference code. This is a code of the most demanding type of aircraft that the airport is designed to serve. So basically, it's the largest aircraft that can airport can accommodate. So ch choice of the ARC is critical to the decision for airport planners or operators. So you can design the airport for a certain size of aircraft. I mean any aircraft smaller than your design side can come into the airport but if the aircraft that is larger than your design maximum cannot use the airport so it's a important decision so if you over design which means you put your ARC higher than the planned basically you design the airport to accommodate bigger aircraft than your plan so in that case, uh, there can be unnecessary capital and maintenance cost. Uh, usually it costs more to build larger. Dimensions of runway, taxiway, and the aprons, uh, ramp area, and the separation. So if you ha have to accommodate larger aircraft, your, for example, your taxiways have to be farther apart. That will... Uh, occupy more space also generally you will need longer runways also you need more space and your more construction cost and more uh, maintenance cost on the other hand if you design the air airport only for the smaller aircraft then um, initially it's cheaper but like I said during the planning, dynamic strategic planning uh, section of the class, uh, you never know what's going to happen. So if the traffic environment changes, the economy goes well, and you might have a need to accommodate larger aircraft. In that case, uh, you'll have to sort of uh, do a major reconstruction project to modify the facilities, and that can be actually even more expensive than over designing the airport so uh, this is a important choice there's no clear one answer you have to understand uh, what's gonna happen whether you over design or under design the airport next page uh, slide number four so the first subjects I'm gonna talk about is about the runway so runway the direction is very important and let's say this is north and there are like basically two different types of north for the runway direction we use magnetic north uh, magnetic north so this is about the magnetic field uh, the true north true north is the direction pointing to the north pole pole and this is where the rotational axis of earth goes through the earth however the magnetic north it is close to the north pole but not exactly so for the runway direction the reference is a uh, magnetic north now for the directions in av aviation or also the navigation for the ships the standard is uh, measuring clockwise, clockwise from the north, from the north. So north, north itself is, uh, you can say it's zero degrees, but uh, the convention is using 360 degrees instead of zero. And then if you're pointing to the east, it, it would be 90 degrees uh, from the north so that's 90 degrees south south 
is 180 degrees uh, and west that would be 270 and back to north it's uh, 0 or 360 but we kind of agree to use uh, 360 So let's look at this example runway. This is pointing to the magnetic north, and the runway is kind of like in this direction. And let's say when we measured the actual direction, it was uh, 43 degrees. Now, uh, we go to the nearest 10 nearest 10 so basically that means we round off with the first digit so the nearest 10 so basically 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 with these uh, just going by 10 the nearest 10 would be the 40 from 43 so we just approximate the direction is uh, 40 and then we dropped the first digit 0 so it becomes just 4 so if we look at the runway from this direction this direction is uh, actually 40 th 43 degrees we approximate by 240 degrees and then we just uh, remove the first digit so it's become 0 4 so we write 0 4 here so if you are a pilot coming into land at this runway and once you're close enough you'll be able to see the number 0 4 on the runway and your magnetic compass on your airplane it will indicate something around 40 so that way they match your magnetic compass and the numbers written on the airport they match this is one of the reason why we use the magnetic north in term instead of true north is because the as you know the magnetic compass that doesn't require anything no power no nothing and it's not likely to malfunction it's a very safe very stable robust device so at any case even in an emergency case your magnetic compass will work and at least you can uh, find your direction from the magnetic north now what if uh, wind is blowing this way so that you have to land from that way then this is a uh, let me write it again magnetic north in that case if you look at your airplane it's going this way kind of a uh, uh, southwest so the direction in terms of the numbers from magnetic north this is going to be all the way around like this so this is basically the initial 43 degrees and you just add 180 degrees so 180 plus 43 it's gonna be 223 and the closest 10 would be 220 and you dropped the first digit it becomes 2 2 so looking from here it's gonna be 2 2 Let me draw it a little bigger. So from here is 0, 4, which is this direction. It's 2 and 2. It's this direction. And the numbers are written like upside down because uh, for the pilot coming in this direction, when the pilot looks down, the pilot can read the numbers correctly. And the pilot here can read also this number correctly as 04. 
Next slide, slide number five. Now, we're going to learn about the multiple runways uh, right after this, but there are many airports around the world with uh, multiple runways and especially parallel runways. Like our Incheon International Airport has uh, three runways. They're all parallel. And the, like the Atlanta International Airport, the busiest airport in the world, has five runways. All of them are parallel. So in that case, the directions are going to be the same. So what if there are two runways that are parallel? So here we have two runways that are same direction and uh, we use the same 43 degrees from the previous slide then it's gonna be 0, 04 from here same 0, 04 and then 2, 2 from here and the same 2, 2 in terms of the directions then how do we distinguish the two runways now if you are coming in arriving in the direction of 0, 04 you'll see one runway to the left and one runway to the right so you distinguish the two using left and right so this is 0, 04 left it's gonna be 0, 04 right now if you are from this direction it's gonna switch so this one here it's gonna be 2 2 left and this one is gonna be 2 2 R so if there are two parallel runways uh, the numbers gonna be 18 apart 4 versus uh, 2 2 and uh, the left will correspond to the right and the right will correspond to the left so runway 4L and 22R, they are this piece of uh, paved strip, just a different direction. And runway 4R and 22 left, that refers to the this piece of uh, strip, just the different direction. Because uh, for each runway, there are two different directions. So that's for the two parallel runways. What if we have three parallel runways? Then they're all going to have the same direction. Let's say it's 0, 04, 0, 04 here, and 2, 2 here. Now we cannot just use left and right anymore. We need one more. So here we use left center right so if you look at the runway from this direction and if you look at the runway from here then it's gonna reverse left center right so if there are three and they're using the left center right convention then you can see that uh, same correlation 0 4 left to 2 to right and 0 4 right to 2 to left but the centers they are both centers 0 4 centers to 2 2 center so here 0 4 C is 2 2 C center so that's for the three runway now what if uh, we have more than three so the next slide slide number six in this case, uh, let's assume uh, the actual direction. This is a uh, magnetic north, and it's quite close to the magnetic north direction. It's six degrees. So two runway are aligned like this, uh, and there are four. One, two, three. So 6, the nearest 10 is 10. So you can see it's going to be 0, 1 
if you're this direction, 0, 1, let's say 0, 1. And then from the opposite direction, it's going to be 1, 9. Uh, now, will they be, again, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 9, and 1, 9, and we introduce one more letter, left, center, right, but uh, it's hard to introduce another letter here. So in this case, uh, we actually change the number. So this is the nearest 10, and the next nearest 10 is going to be 0. So here, you're going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 8, 1, 8. However, I said for the 0, we're going to use uh, 360. So it's going to be 3, 6, 3, 6. Now, now that we have different numbers, we can just use left and right. So left, right, left, right, 3, 6 left, 3, 6 right, 1, 8 left, 1, 8 right. Now, how do we know which runway to use the nearest 10 and which runway to use the next nearest 10? Why not like uh, 0, 1 left, 0, 1 right, and then 1, 9 left, 1, 9 right, and then uh, 3, 6 left, 3, 6 right, 1, 8 left, 1, 8 right. What about this? Is it wrong? So with just uh, this kind of information, we cannot uh, tell apart anything is right. Uh, usually, uh, if the airport's going to have this many runways, uh, they are not built at once. They are built stage by stage. So uh, when the airport has just two runways, they will get the nearest 10. And if they add two more runways, then they're going to get the next nearest 10. And usually, the numbers uh, reflect the build order. So, uh, if you have a kind of a very solid expansion plan... Uh, okay, let's go to the next slide. Slide 7. Solid expansion plan. Uh, you might deviate a little bit. So if you look at the next slide, uh, number 8, that's the example of the Incheon International Airport. It has the three parallel runways like this. And this direction is approximately 330 degrees. So this is 33L, 33R. And then so 1, 5, 1, 5, this is going to be the left, this is going to be the right. Now, there's three runways. Why not 33L, 33C, 33R, 1, 5L, 1, 5, C, 1, 5, R. This would be what I just talked about for the class. However, if you look at the actual Incheon International Airport, it's uh, named differently. This one is 33L, this is 33R, and this one got the next number, 34 and 1, 6. The reason why, uh, in this case, uh, the runway got the next number is they have a plan to add another runway here. Then, this is going to be named 34L and 34R. And 16L 
one six R. So if they use uh, left, center, right, then when this runway is built, uh, they have to change the name of all the runways. So that's gonna be confusing for everybody, the pilots and the controllers. So in that case, uh, you can go ahead and use the next number even though you only have three runways. So this is a slide, let's go to slide number nine. Uh, we've talked about the Dallas-Fort Worth airport a couple times. Uh, it's a very large airport. It's uh, seven runways. And uh, these two in the middle, it's pretty easy to spot. There are four parallel runways. And if you look to the right, there is another short runway that is also parallel. So these five runways are all parallel. And then if you look at these two runways, even though they are really far apart, they are parallel. So whatever the number is, this one will get the left, this one will get the right, and from here, this one will get the left, and this one will get the right. So it might not be clear in the beginning to spot these two runways, which are quite farther away, but they are still parallel. So the same left and right applies. So in this case, it's 3, 1, 3, 1, and uh, 1, 3, 1, 3. Now, these runways are basically kind of a north and south. So um, they named it this, these two, 36L, 36R, uh, 18L, 18R. And then for these three, they have no choice but to use the left, center, right. So in this case, 35L. 3-5 center, 3-5 right. And then uh, this is going to be 1-7 left, 1-7 center, 1-7 right. Like this. So as you can see, uh, in the north-south direction, maybe they can add one more runway, like here. They, I'm not sure. But they might have a plan because uh, if you see there are left center right here but only left right here and then uh, these two are again parallel so you can accommodate up to six parallel runways uh, with this kind of a naming scheme what if there are seven um, I don't know there is no airport in the world which has a seven parallel uh, runways. So next slide, slide number 10 and then let's watch this uh, clip. Let's watch this YouTube clip. So this is called crosswind landing. Now this is at uh, I think Dusseldorf airport and the wind is blowing from the sideways uh, pretty strongly. So the airplane is uh, coming into land. Usually it's gonna be like this. However, because the wind is blowing pretty strong the airport airplane is uh, kind of a uh, facing this way. The wind is blowing this way. This is called the crosswind landing, and it's one of the situations that uh, it's kind of dangerous, and the uh, pilot they don't like it. So 
This is called crabbing. Uh, you face towards the wind and uh, you kind of fly sideways. So to actually move along the center line of the runway, you have to have an appropriate angle towards the wind. And because your landing gear, your landing gears are also aligned with your uh, fuselage, if you touch down sideways, you're going to skid. So right before your landing gear touches the ground, you have to rotate the aircraft and touch down. So it's a tricky situation. So let's look at like uh, 2 minute 15 seconds. This aircraft has a quite a lot of crabbing angle. And as you can see, Now this one, uh, I'm not sure why, maybe because the pilot uh, determined it's safer, but actually didn't really rotate, so there was a little bit of skidding. Let's look at the next aircraft at 3 minutes. Now uh, it kind of a turned before the touchdown. Next one at 3.30. As you can see, it rotated. I mean, turned parallel to the runway uh, just before the touchdown. So this is a crosswind landing. And uh, usually the wind direction is along the runway. So if the wind is blowing this way, the aircraft takes off and land uh, the other way to take advantage of the wind speed to reduce the ground speed. If the wind is blowing this way, the aircraft operates uh, this way. Take off this way, land that way. However, uh, the wind is not always uh, completely aligned. They're gonna be off a little bit. And the component that is, uh, if this is the wind, there the component of the wind. Okay, let me let's say draw this here. This is the wind, and then this is the center line of the runway, and this is the line that is 90 degrees to the center line. So the wind can be decomposed in two components. One is the component parallel to the runway and the other one is the component that is perpendicular to the runway. Now this uh, parallel component, it's kind of, a, I would say, even beneficial. You can reduce, you reduce your touchdown and takeoff speed. However, this uh, component called the crosswind this is the problem. If a this crosswind speed exceeds a certain limit, then at the worst case, uh, the aircraft cannot operate on this runway. And as you can expect, the limit, it depends on the size, weight of the aircraft. Usually smaller limit for the smaller aircraft, the uh, larger limit for the larger aircraft. So there's a simple formula. Let's go to the slide 11 to calculate the amount of crabbing angle you need to follow to fly along a required ground track. Let's uh, go back to our reference. This is north and all the angles are measured clockwise from the north. So let's say here, maybe because of the runway is aligned here, this is the line that your aircraft has to follow. And let's call that ground track angle, let's say psi g. So doesn't matter, your airplane is looking which direction you have to fly along this line. 
So if there's no wind, zero wind, you're going to obviously fly looking at this direction. But if there's a sort of crosswind this way, you're going to fly slightly tilted to the left like this. If there's a crosswind component from your right, you're going to be tilted to your right and fly like this. So let's say the wind is uh, in this direction. So there's some parallel component and uh, perpendicular component and the direction of the wind we designated that uh, psi w. Now wind is basically it means it's blowing like this everywhere. So for the aircraft there's a uh, parallel component like this and the crosswind component like this so which means the aircraft has to tilt it I mean the heading should be slightly towards the left so let's say this is what the aircraft has to be pointing at psi a so let me draw this again let's say east north this is the ground track you need to follow it's psi g and there's the wind psi w the direction of the wind and this is direction of your aircraft now this is not the direction of your aircraft's movement this is the direction of your aircraft's uh, nose so while your aircraft is pointing toward this direction you're gonna fly like this only that way you can follow this given ground track now how do we calculate this using the wind direction and speed so here we say the speed of the wind is VW and the speed of the aircraft is uh, VA. So to fly along this line, uh, you can see that the component perpendicular to the given direction, this one and this one, they should cancel out. So for the aircraft, this one is VA sine of this angle, which is psi G minus psi A. And then this component here is VW sine of this angle, which is psi W minus psi G. So they should be equal. So VA sign equals VW sign psi g. Now to make it kind of look a little better we move this term to the one side and then we can say plus sine equals zero so in both case it's uh, subtracting the ground track angle and the direction of the wind goes with the speed of the wind and the direction of the aircraft goes with the speed of the aircraft and here what is given is the ground track angle that you need to follow it's like the direction of the runway and then the speed of the wind direction of the wind and also you know your airspeed of the aircraft and using that usually what you have to find is the heading of your aircraft where should the aircraft be pointing now just look at the picture of slide 11 uh, in this case 
this is the ground triangle and the wind is uh, kind of a similar direction and in this case you can see that uh, the parallel component is like that and because of this parallel component uh, the same as your flight direction this will actually increase your ground speed uh, so usually the actual operation out of the airport is not like this it's uh, the next slide uh, like slide number 12 so wind is a uh, sort of the opposite direction but there is the crosswind component however things are the same uh, so your aircraft angle psi a your ground track angle psi g and in this case your wind the wind angle is all the way like this psi w so if you correctly measure all the directions uh, clockwise from the north and then you use the same formula VA psi psi A minus psi G plus VW speed of the wind sine psi W minus psi G equals zero and using that usually you calculate the psi A Now the airport layout. So we talked about some basics about the wind and the direction of the runway. And uh, from now on, we'll talk about the different airport layout from the simplest to the more complex. Uh, so airport layout, that's the important f the factors about the airport layout is the first, uh, the most important factor is the number of runways and how they are positioned either they're parallel or crossing each other and then the next factor is the geometry of the runway and the length length of the runway that's the most important factor geometric factor of the runway and then uh, if the runways are parallel then whether these parallel runways are very close or farther apart like this uh, if we go back to our Dallas Fort Worth example these runways are parallel but very far apart these like two red runways they are parallel but they're very close together so that's an important factor and if the airport, I mean the runways, are not parallel, what is the angle between the non, not parallel runways, like here? What is the angle between this runway and that runway? Location of land side facilities relative to the air side facilities. So it's basically where are the terminal buildings located? Uh, if you look at the Dallas Fort Worth example, the most all the passenger terminals they are located in between these uh, two parallel runways uh, similar to similar with the uh, Incheon International Airport in slide number eight uh, Incheon Airport there are two runways I mean three runways and the terminal two one is here and the terminal two is here they are between the runways that's another factor and there are additional land area held some of the land area that's reserved for the future expansion and some of the other land area that's the buffer for noise mitigation and other environmental effects so uh, I right next to the airport it's not a good place to live and uh, even though it's not a good place to live there are always some people who wants to build things near the airport and the worst case uh, they will keep complaining it's too loud so uh, 
just to prevent that, uh, the airport might have a land uh, around the airport to prevent people from living there, uh, basically. So we're gonna look at like six different layouts starting from the single runway. We are at uh, slide number 14 and the example is the San Diego International Airport and then the close parallel runways, uh, two runways and they are parallel but they are close to each other and then independent parallel runways uh, that means there are two runways and they're parallel but there's uh, enough space between the two runways uh, the example is the Munich International Airport there are two runways but they are not parallel they're intersecting like this we're gonna look at the example LaGuardia International Airport and then uh, like the Los Angeles International Airport or Atlanta International Airport uh, they're parallel runways but it's like two pair like this, these two are close and these two are close but this pair is uh, far away from the other pair and uh, this is sort of the most uh, typical layout of a large airport and the last layout we're gonna look at is called the mega airport so which are like huge not for more than five six seven eight runways so let's look at the single runway layout this is the San Diego International Airport and you can see the one runway is right here and the terminal buildings are to the one side of the runway on slide 15 so slide 16 a single runway it's simple like there's nothing else to do there's only one runway and usually um, single runway is because there's not enough land to build other runways uh, so they're usually limited by land so they're not very likely to expand uh, as you can see here it's ocean here and it's like a densely populated residential area here it's gonna be almost impossible to build another runway however if your runway is long and maybe the weather is good a single runway airport can handle surprisingly large number of passengers so even though it's single runway it doesn't necessarily mean um, there's not much traffic it could be quite heavy traffic airport and two examples one is the London Gatwick Airport that we uh, looked at when we are studying the multi-airport systems it handles 33.7 million passengers uh, in 2011 it's 36th in the world so quite impressive and the airport we just saw San Diego International Airport it was about half of the get width 16.3 million passengers okay let's move on to slide 17 uh, it's a parallel runways so depending on the distance between the two runway center lines it's the distance between the center line uh, if it's less than less than 2500 uh, feet then we call it close and then uh, from 2500 to 4300 we call this uh, intermediate and if it's greater than 4300 feet then we call it independent now uh, so <coughs> if it's close uh, they must coordinate uh, which means uh, aircraft if it's close operating on this runway 
and the other aircraft operating on this runway, they cannot like, ignore each other. They have to always coordinate. Uh, we will talk about the rules later when we are talking about capacity. And intermediate, uh, they are kind of be mixed. So sometimes they have to coordinate. Uh, sometimes uh, they can operate uh, like ignoring each other. So uh, one typical case is uh, they have to maintain a certain distance when they are both landing to the runway which is intermediate however if they are departing from both runways like they can do whatever as far as the route diverges now if they are independent says so over 43 hundred feet now they can operate do whatever uh, on each runway so it's like having two single runway airport so you can imagine if we if we are talking about the maximum number of departures per hour for a single runway then if they have two independent parallel runway the maximum number of departures per hour will almost double uh, same with the arrivals so the next uh, slide, slide 18 is an uh, example of closed parallel runways uh, this is the Frankfurt International Airport we talked about the Fraftport AG when we were learning the ownership structure I mean, as you can see, this is a larger airport. There's a, another runway at a different direction here. But these three uh, runways, you can see, they're all parallel. And they're fairly close. Uh, this one, this runway out here, is uh, not close. But these three, they are close. So the Frankfurt International Airport has like runway like this. So we are talking about these three air runways. They are fairly close to each other. And let's go to slide 19. So close parallel runways happens uh, when there are not enough space between the runways. Those land side facilities locate to one or both side of the runway pair. So, I mean, this is close. Uh, it's not enough space to make a building or terminal. So the terminals are either to one side or to the both side. You cannot build in between. And again, this is uh, due to limited land uh, or environmental restrictions or just the land has a weird shape not wide enough to you can build runways uh, far apart some examples are Philadelphia the New York Airport uh, in New York area the Frankfurt International Airport uh, the Malpensa Airport in Milan the third runway at Frankfurt take off only due to environmental restriction. So if we go back to slide 18 and uh, <coughs> there's this airport at a, a different angle and this one is the low noise uh, runway. We're gonna learn about more detail at the last chapter but uh, because there's noise restriction uh, during the like early morning or late at night when people complain more about the noise they have to use this runway to take off uh, as you can see this runway is farther away from the populated area here or other populated area over here so uh, because it's farther away um, this runway is used for the low noise operation and uh, I guess 
It's only used for takeoff at the Frankfurt International Airport. So, <coughs> if we move on to slide 20, this is about closed parallel runways. Their disadvantage is our aircraft have to operate farther from the passenger buildings. Uh, like, uh, the runways are here, maybe another one. The building is to the one side. So uh, to the other runways, it gets uh, farther. And the main ramp area usually cross an active runway. So uh, for these runways, you have to cross other runway to get to the terminal building. So that uh, <coughs> increases surface traffic delay, taxi times, and controller workload. Uh, so we're going to look at <coughs> the Munich International Airport, but if they are farther apart and if the terminal building is in between, then you don't have to cross a runway to uh, get in and out to each of the runway. So this is sort of a more efficient uh, compared to this. Uh. Now even they're just close parallel, <coughs> you can increase the capacity when the weather is uh, good using VFR approach. So let's look at the next slide. Uh, slide 21. This is at the San Francisco International Airport. San Francisco International Airport has uh, two pairs of close runway, but not like this. Uh, they actually crosses each other. Uh, it's a very compact airport. Now, the terminal is here. So, <coughs> usually, their minimum distance between the two aircraft. Uh, if they're both landing on the same runway and if they are close even though this aircraft is landing on the other runway like this they still have to maintain the same minimum distance front and back uh, however if uh, the weather is good so they can fly VFR uh, by looking outside the window, they can see each other, like in this picture uh, here. Looks uh, quite scary. You can see the airplane right next to you. They can land together. So this is interesting uh, because of the aerodynamics. Uh, behind an airplane, there are these uh, wake vortices, uh, wake turbulence uh, generated, and it spread. So there is a danger zone behind the airplane and uh, because it spreads even though you are not directly behind if you're here or here it's still dangerous but if you are right side by side you are it is not dangerous <coughs> I mean the danger is about kind of hitting the other aircraft not getting inside this uh, wake turbulence. So that's why if VFR is possible you can do parallel landing. And uh, let's look at this video. This is at the same San Francisco International Airport. Uh, one Southwest Boeing 737 and one larger United Air Boeing 747. They are landing parallel at the San Francisco International Airport. You can see they are like really close, uh, especially from the angle. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not sure it's uh, intended, or oh, but uh, you can see that smaller 737 is slightly ahead, uh, like a half a fuselage length. And <coughs> you can think that the wake turbulence generated by the 737 is much weaker than the wake turbulence generated by the much bigger 747. So I would say uh, 
the 737 being a slightly ahead is uh, safer compared to the opposite case. Okay.